I've been obsessed with the cognitive sciences and um, cognitive psychology, neuroscience, neuropsychology, um, psychiatry, cognitive psychology, uh, clinical psychology, AI, everything that has to do with that. I'm just obsessed with intelligence. So I was super happy that I got to have you as a guest. And uh, guys, everybody listening in the future or right now, um, Dr. Kaufman has the psychology podcast on YouTube and it is wonderful. I've watched at least a few of his videos, two or three of them, and they're fantastic. Um, please go and subscribe to his channel and please go and listen to, to his videos because they're very scientifically, scientifically rigorous and informational and he's a cool ass guy. So, um, I don't know if you want to, you know, um, I can dive right into the questions that I have, but this is super informal. You know what I mean? It's just us here chilling. Oh, cool. We're just, yeah, it's real informal here. You know, you can say whatever you want to, you can, whatever you want to do. Um, I guess we can, we can dive in a little bit to it. So, you know, you talked about on some of your videos, how you had this first spark when you were younger about studying intelligence. You want to talk about the basis of that? Oh man. Well, when I was a kid, um, I was diagnosed with an auditory learning disability that made it really hard for me to process things. And yeah, everyone, everyone thought I was really dumb. Um, I thought I was dumb. I believe them. Wow. Um, uh, and I, uh, I really went into this inner world of fantasy and, um, I, I create all these like dreams in my head of me being like the champion, like sports player and like all this crazy, you know, I like, like, you know, I was the king in my own head, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, just as a kid and just growing up with that learning disability, I really saw a lot of greater potential around people that, uh, even my friends, you know, in this, in the special ed class were all considered trouble, trouble kids. But mm -hmm. I, I, I thought there was a lot more potential. Uh, than anyone was seeing, seeing them, and yeah, like the roots of what I study now really, really were were laid uh, when I was a kid in a, really an unjust education system that yeah. hasn't changed much over the years, unfortunately. Yeah, I can kind of relate to you because when I was a kid, I was you know full obsessive, full ADHD, was on uh, Adderall and uh, some other I think SSRI or something, and. You know, my, my childhood was a haze, but I remember being obsessed with why people didn't accept different types of intelligence. I didn't think about it quite that way until I was like 17, 18. But I mean, it was definitely, you know, sometimes I felt stupid, too. You know what I mean? Because I couldn't learn exactly. And and, and mental health has come a long way. And, and, you know, how the kids are treated is the most important. And, I you know, my high school education was shit. I had to, I'm an autodidact, you know, so I had to have to go that route. But anyway, um, so that's that's who you are. That's who we are. Um, when did your when did your bipolar? Wait, can we talk about your specific? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Everything. I'm an open book, brother. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Me too. Um, like, when did it uh, show itself most? Like, as, as ever since you can remember, pretty much. Twenty four was when it really started happening. Right. Seriously. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. It was, it was adult set. I mean, yes, I probably had, I had behavioral issues. I didn't have conduct disorder, you know what I mean? But I had behavioral issues, yeah. emotional regular regulation problems. Um, yeah. I had, I had serious ADHD. I mean, my, my education was only good because of my mother. And then in high school, you know, I just winged everything, you know, I made A's and B's just because the education system at that time and in, in the late nineties and early two thousands, when I was there in a small town with only, 160 people in the, uh, you know, it was just a bad educate. It was just bad education. That's all it boils down yeah. to. Yeah. How old are you now? I'm 37. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah I, I thought maybe you're still in your twenties. No, 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 yeah. no. A little bit older than that. I'm getting old. <laughs> a lot of our friends here on the server are in their twenties and they're just starting their journey on the philosophy yeah. of mind and psychology and intelligence and consciousness and all of this stuff. And uh, I find that a beautiful thing. I think it's awesome. I think the journey is just more fun. You know, I find more fun in learn. I love teaching, but I find more fun in learning than I do anything. And I think, you know, I'm sure you probably feel the same. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'd be curious to hear from people uh, on this call what they how they define intelligence. And, yeah, uh, well, here's the thing. A lot of people, th this is still a beta program, so it's not completely released to the public just yet. We yeah. do have callers. 
there probably will be callers when I get done talking oh, with nice. you, you know, for 50 minutes. To... Oh, by the way, how long do we have you? Um, I'd like to leave by 6 p.m. my time. So an, an what, hour, Where are you at? 5.05. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sure. Sure, we'll do an hour and 40, 45 minutes. That sounds good. Yeah, that'd be okay, great. Okay, cool. Hopefully we can get some callers in here. We have our whole team of Pangburn philosophers that hopefully we'll call in as it goes along. I've also got my, my friend speaker here, uh, Tart Vader. He is a, uh, an extraordinary philosopher with a beautiful mind, and he's a, he's a really cool person. So we'll get his takes here in just a little bit. But um, We'll talk for like, what, 45 minutes and do a 15-minute call in? or Yeah, well, it's not so structured like that. I mean, if somebody wanted to call in right now. And oh, right now a, they can. I got you. Yeah, if it, was a pertinent, if it was a pertinent question on topic of what we, you know, what we want to talk about with intelligence and everything, I don't mind that. But I have, awesome. I have made a point to make a lot of questions and topics to talk about with you. And uh, cool. I just wanted to go over those because I'm, I'm selfish and I want to, <laughs> I want to oh, get no, explanations. Cool. Yeah, no, awesome, awesome. So, cool. so we'll, we'll just, uh, did you, what's that now? No, that's awesome. No, I'm, yeah. I'm so honored. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we, I went over your videos and I'm not going to dissect everything, but you know, you talked okay. about how, of course, different cultures have defined intelligence in many different ways, right? Yeah. So many different ways. Um, could you give a good juxtaposition between two cultures that are antithetical in terms of uh, how they view intelligence? Have you gone that far into it? Oh, yeah. Well, there's there's the multiple intelligence theories, like Howard Gardner's theory that argues there's like seven different types of intelligences, uh, right. from musical to bodily kinesthetic. Right. Existential, uh, spatial. If I can do that, does that make me intelligent? <laughs> No, like uh, you said, you said on that actually um, that the only ones that didn't correlate directly to the G factor were intrapersonal, musical, and bodily kinesthetic, right? Oh, you listened to my my episode. The entire thing. Wow, I'm honored. Yep. I'm honored. So a yeah, lot of yeah. this is going to come from that episode, right? <laughs> Right on, right on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I follow all your stuff, man. I'm going to watch all your new videos. I can't wait. Oh, that's what, that's what's up. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. The um, visual, spatial. You know, people who tend to be good at reasoning uh, tend to be good at reasoning, kind of regardless of the content of the reasoning. They're just good right. reasoners. They're, they're really quick at. They're really quick, and they're really. Um, uh, although quickness is not necessarily correlated with depth of of thought, and that's important too. Like a lot of people can really get through all the. The material in school hey, but they're, but they're so thinking sorry to not Scott, oh hang on one second i'm i'm so sorry to interrupt hey, you it Scott. seems as though there's some audio bug uh yeah, let's you see mute and then unmute scott um uh, travis is asking that you mute and unmute really quickly and see if that fixes the audio glitch did that fix the audio glitch or no oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. seems so seems so Okay. You hear a difference Sorry about now? that. Sorry about that. Yeah. You hear a difference? You, 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 sound, you sound great now. You're perfect. You're great now. You're perfect. Okay. Okay. I'm perfect just the way I am. Um, yeah. And what was I saying? What was I saying? <laughs> oh, what were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about uh, G Factor and Hart Howard Gardner's uh, three types oh, yeah. that correlated to G Factor. Yeah. Yeah. People have different notions of what intelligence means. Uh, and, and within the field, people kind of debate with each other whether or not there's such a thing that means to be generally smart. Um, it does seem like some people are generally good at what's called fluid reasoning. They're able to see patterns. They're able to see analogies quickly. Um, yeah. and that is a form fluid of intelligence. crystallized intelligence? Is that, is that yeah, similar? Yeah, yeah, man. Not... Yeah, okay. brother. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Crystallized intelligence is having a, a, a knowledge and right. Um, right. Uh, and and dare I say wisdom to some degree that knowledge sure. can bring us, sure. but, um, food and reasoning is without knowledge. How can you, can you catch on? Can you pick things up? Um, and that's the kind of intelligence we really emphasize a lot in schools, but we don't really emphasize creative intelligence that much. In fact, if you got in creative intelligence, you will be sent to detention. Let's be honest. Um, so, uh, <laughs> you got too you much. Will. I, I was, <laughs> 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, and me too. Um, if you think outside the box, if you, um, uh, you know, you're really uh, constantly challenging the teacher and coming up with, and you're like, yeah, I don't think that this is the, the way things are, yeah. uh, you know, is good. <laughs> then yep. you know, there's all yep. sorts of all sorts of problems with that, you know. So, um, yeah. So the, that's. Um, that's uh, multiple intelligences. Um, and then there's like some, Robert Sternberg, my advisor, argued there's practical intelligence. Practical. Yeah, let's get to that real quick. He talked about um, uh, successful intelligence, right? His book, Creative, Practical, and Analytical, The Theory of Successful Intelligence. Is there? Yeah, yeah. D d d is my audio still choppy? Uh, no, is mine? No, you sound great. I just was looking at the comments. Um, uh, that's kind of past. They're they're talking about what what Tart had to say a minute ago. I think you're good. I haven't had any issues. Thanks, Peter Box. Thanks, Peter Box. Uh, Peter is our best friend. He's a good man. What does he play? His music. His music. He is a musician and he plays the accordion and he is absolutely fantastic. Wow. At it. He is a really good accordion player. That's yeah. badass. Yeah. Yeah. I always loved the accordion. I always loved the accordion growing up. He's always playing gigs, man. He's just constantly playing gigs with these bands and stuff. He's a fantastic musician, but like you talk about, that can't be that can't be directly absolved into the G factor, right? Yeah, I mean, it, this is the question: Do we want to call these things? Do we want to call musical ability intelligence? Mm. You know, um, or is it? You know, do you do you think it's possible to be? really talented at basketball but to be dumb in general <laughs> yeah i mean you know walk off to the side of a cliff because you're chewing gum and not thinking about it stupid um <laughs> yeah maybe so yeah yeah so you know that's the sort of uh the sort of burning questions i have and um uh, and i think that there really is a type of intelligence that that i call self-actualizing intelligence that yeah, get into your me. get into your idea of it. I'm I'm more interested in that into, than other people's. Jump, oh, okay, that's okay. Good, good. Let's jump right into mine. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah um, I try to give other people credit, but um, yeah, I have my own theory that I think's the best. <laughs> um, my theory um, really takes into account the fact that life. You know, not everyone uh, wants to compete each other in the cognitive Olympics. You know, like we, we treat IQ like it's the most important thing in school. And, and, and for most of us, I would say for virtually all, virtually all of us, what we really care about is that we're self-actualizing our own unique potential and that our own unique uh, capabilities are, are coming out in a way that makes us unique, not in a way that we're competing with each other. Um, in fact, getting caught in that rut where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not as good as that person or not good as that person really is a big way to detract from our potential and what we're capable of becoming. I agree. So, I agree. you know, so I, I, I think there needs to be a recognition that self-actualizing intelligence, which is the capability to, to self-actualize. That's as simple as that, you know, make um, an individual and, of oneself. Is that what you mean? Just, you know, accept the introspective self kind of thing, the intrapersonal intelligence. Well, we all have, of a, we all have amazing creative potential and I think being able to tap into that creative potential and generate something that is uniquely ours and uh, gives and shows our human existence what we're capable of is really what we're kind of at all after and you know meaning um, you know we're, we're after some deep meaning and um, which creativity often gives us is that meaning and uh, I just think we're losing the, the point of, of intelligence when we treat it like fluid reasoning is the only thing that, you know, is, matters or, or is the most important thing that matters in a human. I just feel like for most people, that's not the thing that they care about the most. Yeah. I don't think so either. Um, it's kind of like how the DSM-5 is going to go to the DSM-6 instead of like these traits that we that we put people under, you know, and, and do they have this trait? Do they have this trait? Do they have this trait? You know, it's going to be yeah. more focused on like patterns of behavior and like the, the correlations between those patterns 
I think that's really awesome. Uh, it's just a tangent, tangential point to what you were talking about. But um, what about like, you know, I, and I, I think you're I think you're did you want to delve more deeply into your ideas? Because I'll listen to you for an hour on that. No, no, let, let's riff. Let's riff. I'm, I'm, let's I'm riff a little bit. Okay. So let's yeah. talk about like um, how intelligence is measured. The audio, from, the audio is like is back. If we could get that fixed first. Oh, sorry, the audio noise is back. I'm yeah, sorry. I didn't hear it. Muting and, uh, muting. Uh, Travis is asking to get that fixed. Well, this this, pro this program is just wacky, man. It's a wacky program. Let's try something else. Let's try something else. Let me put some headphones on. Okay. All right. Okay, can you hear me? It's still doing it a little bit, but uh, still, I, I mean, I don't happening. have a problem with it. But if other, you know, if other people in the future will, that's I guess what we're it's still about. happening. It's still happening. Yeah, I still hear it. Dang, man. Um, okay, is this better? You can try the mute unmute thing again if I you did. want to. I did. I just did. Okay, that fixed it. I mean, yeah. I don't know why this is. This keeps. We always have some kind of technical yeah. difficulty when we do this show. <laughs> it's always, yeah. always something like that. It's okay. That's okay. Sounds good um, now. Yeah. So we were riffing so, about. Yeah. Tell uh, me what your thoughts are. Yeah. Tell me your about thoughts. about psych psychometrics, how we would measure it. Oh God. I mean, any IQ test that I can think about is is not taking all of general intelligence into uh, into account. I mean, yeah. You mentioned a bunch of them on your video, and I've, I I don't remember every name of all the different IQ tests, but but mm. if if they do well in one thing, doesn't doesn't the 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 more efficient people do well in all aspects in most iq tests is that how it there's works? a tendency for that to happen but i think we also need to recognize that these correlations are not these are they're not perfect and and all of us have jagged profiles i mean even the quote gifted kids um uh they have more jagged profiles than anyone else where they can be very sharp high in something and very low in something else and we all our, our profiles of our abilities within each within each of us is 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 rare is very jagged um uh, as uh, my friend todd rose talks about you know it's really important to recognize that that there's no such thing as average no i don't think so either doesn't exist um, don't exist my brother and it, this this is a tangent my brother could I don't think he has the capability of understanding Aristotelian logic. However, he is so good at video games and like you know spatial and and uh, hand-eye coordination and everything that it's impressive. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just to watch him play and his reaction times and his ability to to strategize and things like that. So I mean, you know, that comes that that, that whole old argument of book of uh, book smart, street smart kind of thing. That that old colloquial phrasing. Um, So let's see. What 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 test would be satisfactory for like a holistic solution? Do you think? Do you think that any of the psychometrics that we have are going to be useful? Good question. Um, I think that IQ testing can be valuable under certain circumstances when you're a trained psychologist um, and you're using those tests in ways to help figure out where someone's cognitive difficulties may lie. Um, and how to help them with that, it can be very valuable. But we often lose sight of the point of cognitive testing and we limit people's potential as opposed to use that information to help them. I mean, as long as it's being used to help people, I'm down. But it's just not, it's not tends, that doesn't tend to be how we use that information. And that is no, a real it tends shame. to be a derogatory connotation. Yeah, it's a real shame. It's like, Oh, it's it's usually used in a, in a comparative way. Like, oh, this person has a higher score than this person, therefore this person is more capable um, in life. And I think it's, we, the problem is with the in life thing. Um, that's uh, that that's, I don't think that's how we should be looking at the situation. I think it's much more broad and uh, gradient, like on a on a spectrum yes. kind of 
scale, like a bell curve, you know, kind of thing. Uh, where do you want to find the averages based upon your um, your hermeneutics, your interpretational structure? Uh, so, yes. not we know that not all IQ tests measure general intelligence very well. They can measure like certain things, ab abstraction, logical reasoning, pattern recognition, mm -hmm. problem solving, critical thinking skills, things like that, right? Like most people, when I hear people talk about intelligence quotient, I hear intellectual horsepower. Yeah, you that's know? right. That's right. It's We train it like it's a, like the cognitive Olympics. Right? Yes. It's like not everyone in school wants to compete on their intelligence. <laughs> it's just not, it's ridiculous how, why we treat that schools like that. You talked and you we t you talked about the the fluid reasoning that's adaptable. You know, psychologists call it that, and it's it's the analogical reasoning. You seem to find an important, or a lot of people seem to find an importance in analogical reasoning being the the high end factor. Yeah, yeah. So what's um, up with that? <laughs> um, well, I think it's okay to to recognize that at the group level there exists these co these correlations people who do tend to do well on some kind of these cognitive reasoning items too tend to do well in others and there are some things in common but i think that's just the level of analysis that we don't need to focus on among people i mean that exists scientifically it exists but i think we put way too much um attention on that level um can i ask you a question yes please is travis pangborn here he is As well? he's in the uh He's in the speakers. I mean, not the speakers. The uh, listeners. That's awesome. I wanted. To He's say usually writing on his book a lot of times. If I were to guess. <laughs> yes. What's he working on? He's, with his book? He's calling in. He's calling in. <laughs> He's calling in. All right. Well, let's yeah, get Travis. Let's up talk. Here. Let's talk. Travis, come on up. Come on up, sucker. You want to be on video? Uh, we can't hear you if you're speaking, Travis. I invited him to speak, but I don't know if he's going to see what he does. Travis, you there? Oh, this program is Tart to Travis. very interesting. Art thou there? <laughs> there Hello? it is. <laughs> he's in the speakers. Let's see. If Hello? He's there. Can there, I there it me? is. Yo. Earth to Scott and Thomas. Can you hear me? Yes. I can now, hear. do I have the audio bug? That's the big question. No, you don't. This oh, okay, program's good. a little buggy. This program. Yeah, a little it's buggy. a little buggy. It's it's in uh, beta, and so we're, you know, plugging along with it. We have about four hundred episodes on here. Hopefully, that's enough to a good enough sample size to. Wow. You know, well, Scott, thanks for uh, joining us today. This is uh, this is great. Um, yeah, my pleasure. Where are you based? I'm in Canada, uh, uh, Vancouver. Did you, yeah. um, didn't you host a, d a debate between my friends, uh, Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris? Yeah. Point? So, so four part series, that was a, that was uh, uh, a pretty insane time. Yeah. We did two events in Vancouver and then we popped over to, um, mm. uh, Dublin and, uh, London for the final two events and yeah, Brett Weinstein, uh, was involved in the first two and Douglas Murray joined us for uh, date three and four. So, yeah. That's right. That's right. Awesome. Yeah. Sam, Sam's a, a buddy of mine here in California and we have oh, okay. dinner cool. parties and stuff. All yeah. The nice. Time. nice. So, so let yeah. me know next time you're in town. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you, it, too, it, you too, Thomas. <laughs> I'm not. I, I. I don't want to take away from Thomas at all. I'll tag concrete. along. Yeah, yeah. I'll tag. Just I'll ride on the top of the. You can just tie me on the top of the car or whatever. You know. No, no. I feel like Thomas is the kind of guy, cat. I want to like ride in my Ford Mustang with and blast rap music. <laughs> We'd do it. We would do it. Oh, I would yeah. be so out of the loop on that. I'd be looking for my Rocky yeah. Horror Picture Show soundtrack CD, mm -hmm. and I would force you guys to sit through that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that I would steer you the whole time with disdain. <laughs> so you guys you guys are talking about intelligence quotient i mean uh we are we're talking about the psychometrics of intelligence right now and, right. and how most of the of the many different theories of intelligence and things like that seem to point back to some kind of g factor it seems to be you know lots of tests in psychology are g loaded 
as uh, Dr. Kaufman says. Yeah, intellectual yeah. horsepower is is kind of what I think would be like a colloquial way of putting how we are current or what we are currently measuring with intelligence quotient testing. I don't know if Scott agrees with that um, or not. Uh, but yeah, this this idea, this more like philosophy of semantics idea of what should intelligence mean? Uh, uh, you know, and, and I think, you know, if we can get over our own um, emotional knee-jerk reactions to when we start challenging labels and, and terms and, and start thinking about like, well, maybe it makes sense for us to say uh, the, the intellectual genius of uh, Beethoven right even if we're only looking at at his music or the you know the intellectual genius or the intelligence of elton john i'm wearing my elton john tour shirt right now yes. right so you know what does it mean i mean i've been playing music my entire life since i was three i was plunking plunking away on the piano and started picking up boogie woogie at five six right uh so so uh was what was going on when I was starting to catch on to music and starting to get into that kind of flow state where you could just your your mind isn't the same way that it is when you're going to purchase a coffee your mind is in this kind of state of like whatever comes at me is cool and I'm going to incorporate it into this this next uh dialectic with the things that are being thrown at me musically and you know if I'm playing with another musician or whatever so um yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, interestingly enough, the flow state is correlated with IQ zero. I've read, I've read Isn't that weird? Of, the flow state. Read, yeah. We, I actually did a show on the flow state like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Nice. I love the flow yeah. state. I yes. teach it. I teach how to get into the flow state. I, I used to be a flow coach. <laughs> that was my job. I, uh, I always, <laughs> always reduce it to mindfulness, meditation, and metacognition, mm. but it could be more than that, I guess. No, so I how mean, do you teach that, Scott? That's it. really interesting to me. Like, well, how do you teach getting into the flow state? Well, that's the that's the million dollar million dollar question. If you could if you could bottle it or you know press the yeah. button, you know. <laughs> but uh, a big part of flow coaching, it, it takes place not just in one session, but it takes place in a a, a number of sessions, um, where you really try to clear all the cobwebs away from a person, all the other extraneous things that are, that are getting in the way of their, it's more about getting rid of the things that are getting in the way of flow state. Flow is our, our natural state. So the more yeah. you can take away that distraction, take away the mother calling, take away the nagging thought that you have to please your girlfriend, take away the thought, oh, did I write that paper that I don't even want to write and I've been procrastinating for two years. And then you just like spend more of your, more of your time creating a bubble around uh, even if it's like two hours a day you're like no this is my flow time so i really i really encourage people to, to pick their flow time during yes. the day you know what nobody can bother them yeah i, I agree what? big time yeah. is that like you know i use music and i use uh, meditation to get into a flow state i don't have like a sport yes. or anything that's like physical that gets me into the flows i used to do it with working out i could really get into the flow state with my music and everything and it was like i wasn't even there it was just like an autonomic process but yes. uh you know i thought that was really good. go ahead Travis. You yeah, I was going to say that this reminds me. So I used to play these like uh, boogie woogie, like uh, Travi Lee Lewis instead of Jerry Lee Lewis uh, piano gigs back in the day. And sometimes <laughs> I would play these long, like eight minute, 10 minute pieces where it was just I was soloing most of the time. And whatever comes out of my mind is what comes out on the piano. You know, it's, uh, uh, you know, I'll start with my uh, the, the in the bass hand. I got the 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 CG and the CA going so so i would start with that and then and then we and then eventually you would start getting this feeling as though okay that there's no longer start middle anticipating the end things like this we're just playing at, at this point but one thing i thought of scott when you said um trying to let go of of the mother trying to let go of this the other the the other um things that may be uh, maybe impeding your ability to step into that flow state. Um, I always felt like, yes, you disconnect from it to some degree, but the passion of it is still there. 
you know, like that, like whatever, whatever is hap- has happened to me in my experience, the flow state wasn't me releasing myself from my experience, whatever is happening, it, that, that stuff was still there, but it wasn't there in, in a way that was impeding the flow state. It, it, that just made me think of that, you know, because if I, if I got in a big argument with someone before I played a gig, um, it's not like that argument was in my head and it impeded my ability well, to good. get into that flow state, but it was, but it definitely affected the passion of the music. Oh, that's interesting. Well, for a lot of people that would affect, that would affect their flow state mm. actually. Um, anything that brings into the mind, a self-critical aspect or a sort of a, well, metacognitive as Thomas said, you know, um, that, 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 that's a, that's a buzz killer of flow metacognitive where you're kind of standing on, on top of each other, uh, stand on top of yourself and mm. trying to reflect on what you're doing. There are a lot of things we do right. in life from sex to aesthetic appreciation to musical appreciation to creating um, where you want to be in it. You don't want to be above it. Mm. If you wouldn't mind, Scott, just pressing your mute and unmute button just because we got that audio bug back. Thank you. Oh, that Oh, he might have signed off. Yeah, accident. No, I think he, I think he, he actually pressed... hung up or something. <laughs> Oops, like... No, he might have just pressed the video button. No, he's not on the. He's no, he dropped down anymore. to callers, so he just oh, got. Okay. He, he okay. accidentally hung up. He, he's in the caller queue. <laughs> well, that'll uh, that'll, that'll clear do. up the bug. That'll. Do oh, it. hopefully, definitely so. You know, I don't even when I'm when I'm writing music and those sorts of things because I'm a pianist myself. I don't even know that like my. Um, that I'm actually having that much input. It's more, it's more intuitive than it is. Like I've, I've dreamed entire piano pieces, woke up and knew how to play it. And I can't explain how, how like, how did I dream this? And here I am playing it and it's real. Like it, it makes, it makes no sense to me. But at the same time, I don't feel like I have that much like, cog, like actual input from my conscious states. It's more like, it's more intuitive to me. I don't know if anyone else has that kind of sort of feeling, but that's the way I am about it. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, I, I think so too. Like, you know that, you know that uh, thing where you have that, you can have that disassociation from like driving home from somewhere at night and you're just like, how did I, like, how did I, I don't remember that drive at all. Like, I feel <laughs> that same, same, that same way about music sometimes. Hey, welcome back, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, you, yeah. had, you had a very profound point before you left. Um... Talking yes. about metacognition, yeah. Very, very profound. Well, yeah, I, we, the, the thing is I've been studying the neuroscience of this stuff, and if you look at different brain networks, um, it's actually interesting. The kind of brain network you have when you're in a mindful meditation state tends to be the exact opposite of the state of when you're in flow. Yeah. So that is interesting. Flow and mindfulness are actually kind of like opposites in a way. Um, I can see yeah. that. Yeah, okay. Well, oh, I'm glad. Yeah, cool. I'm I'm glad you can see that because a lot of people in the field have been having trouble reconciling that seeming paradox. Well, the flow state is more about completely letting go. Like there's nothing. Yes. It's like it's like it's like a gray zone, like this big. You know what I mean? Correct. And you're just Correct. completely in it. Whereas like metacognition and mindfulness and meditation are observing your thoughts and emotions, like meta. Yes. You know, and it's it's taking you out of that flow state. So. It's just exactly. weird. I'm kind of a weird person, so I can get into these flow states with music and stuff, and it all ends up, if, if I'm analyzing it or if I'm just letting it hit me and I'm just yes. in the waves, I mean, you know, metaphorically speaking, but yeah. Yeah, you nailed that. You nailed it. Some in the chat are asking, could you maybe define for us what mindfulness is and then what Whoa. flow state is so that everyone has kind of a, a good grasp of what these things are? Cause That's like they're, they're someone asked. <laughs> Well, I appreciate the question. That's like asking me, what is intelligence? And I mean, all these things have rabbit holes. Every single, th- every single one of those things have rabbit holes. Yep. You go down. <laughs> call, call exactly. Ready to go down the hole with you. <laughs> well, there, uh, is that, uh, is that, tart, is that tart? Go, tart? That's Tart, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's Tart. We're definitely going to let Tart get in on this. I just wanted to ask you, I just wanted to go bring, over a few Bring more Tart things. over here. Bring Tart's video. Tart, actually, well. yeah. Are you, can you come up to a video or? I, I you don't, don't have, have video webcam. capability. Bring the Pangburn team on. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's hard uh, if you had some questions. Go ahead, bud. No, I was just well, saying. Well, I guess that he the, did ask that the, question. It was in the chat. Yeah. That's all yeah. I was saying is people in the chat yeah. were asking questions. Oh, yeah. okay. I got you. No, I, got I, I got the. I understand the question, and I, I think that the, you have to first of all recognize there's no agreed upon definition of these things. Um, I like to think of mindfulness as simply the 
act of um, of becoming intimate with your mind. <laughs> I've never quite put it that way before, but um, in a, in a sort of detached way, <laughs> detached intimacy. I love that paradox as well, right? Like where you are not identifying with the thoughts, um, but you are very, very, you're getting deeper and deeper insight into the nature of your mind and how your mind works. And you even put a little loving kindness into that as well. Like, Oh, oh I so Scott, agree with that. Oh yeah. Man. Like, Oh Scott, like again, you, that loop is playing again. And then just like, you know, like having love for that and like, don't be so harsh on yourself. That's happening. Like we all have our habits and our loops and our patterns. Yeah. And the first part to change is being aware of them. So I think that that kind of awareness is what mindfulness Accepting can your, be. your flaws and your shadow and all these mm -hmm. other metaphorical things inside the intrapersonal uh, cog cognition world or the, the imagination world, whatever you want to call it, the uh, abstract mm -hmm. forms of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then flow. Um, what is flow? The flow. What is flow? <laughs> and nobody knows what flow is. Uh, no one can look honestly. Mihai Chick sent me high. Hasn't been able to find it. My my brother Steve Kotler. When I ask him to find flow, he evades the question. He's he, he runs the Flow Research Collective. Uh, he's my brother from another mother. Um, but he avoids. He 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 goes in this whole tangent. I'm like, you never answer. It's like, what is a woman? <laughs> answer the damn question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, look. <laughs> Yeah, Scott. If you were if you were forced forced to like put your money yes. on it or or give your best bet, uh, you know, how would you describe flow if you if you had to? Okay, because I, I okay I did I did attempt something on the spot with my flow. So let's see if I could attempt something on the spot with flow. Well, I think it's 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 a state of consciousness, and I would call it an altered state of consciousness because I don't yeah. think it's our ordinary uh, consciousness is not. It's I flow. agree, and I, and I also don't think you'd want to be flow 24 7 um be awkward <laughs> awkward you would not you, be able you to get, multitask you would get I mean, run over would... by a bus yeah. yeah but um yeah um but i think it's an alter let's start with that it's an altered state of consciousness uh state of consciousness when where you uh are completely in the moment and uninhibited by second order of control neuroscience systems so you're uninhibited by metacognitive flexion self-critical consciousness um, and any other forms of consciousness that uh, are putting the brakes on you creating and learning that's i guess what i would say good a definition yeah um i i do now see what you mean by those three things being separate from the flow state that's a very poignant mm ideology um mm. so you said also, no ideologies around here no I, I, no idea just uh <laughs> yeah I, I, I ideology free zone i i am not a dogma a, a dogmatic person i'm a fallibilist i don't believe anything absolutely so i'm right there with you yeah yeah, yeah. uh i was just uh, uh travis or tart if you have questions you can you can ask but i've got a few more things i was going to cover oh i'm i'm happy listening sure uh, here's a, here's a simple one. Um, you know, you said we change through our lives in terms of intelligence, and I'm sure that deals with neuroplasticity and everything. Um, you know, the fact that correlations differ across lifespans, um, you know, psychologists have expanded our understanding of intelligence that goes beyond general intelligence. So can we talk a little bit about that? What would be, what would be beyond general intelligence and how we change over time? intellectually oh wow well, well personal growth is a broader construct than general intelligence pangborn just uh pangborn just uh, zapped out <laughs> um, yeah i don't know what happened well i don't know but um i hope his existence didn't just <laughs> zap out. <laughs> um yeah i know um yeah so i i view you know self-transcendence as and personal growth and self-transcendence are beyond general intelligence. You know, there, there are things that um, involve the whole person. There are things that um, are much uh, bigger than one slice of us. I view intelligence as one slice of us. A big part of what I've been trying to do in my work on self-actualization is I, I'm into whole person actualization, right? Um, and, bringing, and bringing to harmony and integrating all different kinds of sides of yourself to have a 
to create a creative masterpiece of your existence you know what will that look yeah. like what will yeah that look like yeah well i've spent so much time in my life because of bipolar in introspection and dealing mm -hmm. with my interpersonal innerverse that i have uh come to different conclusions about many things you know kind of swimming in the the abyss of myself um i don't know i really don't uh what you're saying is beautiful though how you put it just a moment ago but, but um, wait wait i want to just double click on uh, swimming in the abyss of yourself um yeah. i think that it is important to recognize that um not all the kind of contents of our uh of our uh we call it the the imagination brain network which is uh creates meaning for us and creates a sense of future oriented um it also creates a sense of self and a narrative of ourself um some forms of mindfulness can um, help us change our relationship to that so that our narrative so we don't swim so deeply in the sea of ourself um, where we get we're identified with it in such a deep way um, and I think that that would be really valuable for you is if you change the relationship your to your uh, default mode brain network or imagination brain network um, in yeah. a way that you are not so in it it's good to have a little bit of a distance um, so you can have that kind of loving kindness do you know what I mean I uh, get out of that abyss with love and kindness. I kind of take the hand of the child inside of me and say, it's all yeah. okay. All of this, all of this self introspection, yeah. all of this getting lost, all of this letting go, it's okay. And um, my, my moral axioms are love and well being. So I, mm. I base all of my decisions and everything off of that and kindness. So yeah, that is what, that is what I've learned through my, my inner travels. I just hope that you apply that to yourself as much as you apply that to others. I do enjoy myself. There are some things I don't like about myself, of course, because we're mm. human, but I do like who I am. I really do. And I wish Good. that for everybody. Good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I wish that and for the, everybody. And the more that you like yourself, the more you'll be inclined to be accepting of others. We have found that over and over again in our research, that the more people score higher on self-acceptance, the more... They tend to score higher in other acceptance. I mean, if you ever go to a, have you ever been to a Ku Klux Klan meeting? Uh, I know friends who have been, but not me. Oh, real quick, real quick. Hold yes. that in your mind. People yes. are telling yeah. me that you've got to unmute and mute again. Oh my God, I hate this program. It, the, the unmute button down there is just on the bottom left. Okay. Like in the center there. Yes. Uh, are we back? Okay, it fixed. We're Good back. job. Who's Tubin's? Uh, let's see. Don't need no tubins around here. <laughs> I'm trying to look at all these questions and stuff. Don't need no tubins around here? That was a bad joke. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, have, <coughs> so have you, ever, have you ever been to a Ku Klux Klan meeting? Mm -mm, no. Well, they, they're pretty insecure. They don't yeah. really love. Well, they don't really love themselves. No, love the it shows in their disgust for out groups. You know, it also yes. the whole yes. correlation between your the less you are disgusted by things, the more your correlation to accept out groups. You know, so oh yes, <laughs> yes, and uh, and interestingly enough, uh, oxytocin, which researchers used to think was the love or the cuddle hormone it's become quite clear it's really just the in-group love hormone it really is yeah that's what yeah. i've read too yeah I, you know i just don't understand like eventually we want everything in the in-group you know yes every every self in the in-group i mean that's the that's the goal but i don't maybe that's too politically idealistic of a notion no um, it's not it's not your I identity have a superordinate identity of human you know, is, yeah. the, the, the problem with uh, the society we live in right now with such a obsessive focus on what's your identity, you know, uh, and that could be within anything from gender identity to racial identity to, well, I don't know, you can't change your <laughs> racial identity yet. We haven't gotten there, but uh, uh, someone tried, Rachel something tried and that didn't go well for her. But, um, uh, but uh, religious identity, political identity. Uh, there's just so many different forms of a day and we're, we're living in a society where we're trying to force everyone um, to pick an identity um, as opposed to um, hold a superordinate identity in our head um, yeah. as our default. 
Yeah. There is no superordinate identity in 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 America right now, uh, or no. Van- Vancouver. <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, you're right about that. Are you in Vancouver, Thomas? Where are you? I am actually in Alabama. <laughs> oh my gosh! What about yeah. the although? What about the identity of guns in the grand old USA? It seems like that is the uniting religion and force yeah, in the United States. Yeah, good point. Really good point. Guns. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's something uh, that uh, that feels uh, very American um, about yeah, like because uh, it's freedoms, right? Like uh, the idea you're, a real American is is being able to free to do whatever you want. Uh, the problem is you have a lot of people that uh, they take that freedom and then they uh, they they act as though well, whatever you do with that freedom, therefore, uh, is good because freedom is good and that's not a yeah. valid logical syllogism as you know no. Travis you're a philosopher <laughs> and as you know too Thomas <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's i think that's just a testament to how important it is to have uh conversations about ethics publicly i think government Absolutely. should invest in the conversations about ethics and um and and including community engagement and family engagement uh, to, uh, to be involved, because uh, if people aren't talking about ethics and people are just kind of have this attitude of like, well, you you keep what's good to you and I keep what's good to me, you know, kind of this like dogmatic way of going about uh, yeah. every I'm not going to be changing. Nothing will ever possibly change my mind about any of this you know that i see a lot of that um just generally around the world and i think it's a mistake i think we we all need to come fallibilistically uh to any of our ethical proclamations and say and start yeah. with uh my first maxim which is that certainty is almost certainly unattainable you know that's what uh, uh, i think eradicating this idea that we need to be certain about things or we need to pursue things in hopes of finding certainty i, th- I think we should you know w- we can we can simplify that that endeavor by simply uh identifying identifying what our moral quests are and having questions uh, and conversations about those moral quests you know? yeah that's great how old are you how old are you travis 35 right on ran Oh, yeah. How about you? Look. How old are you, Scott? Man, I am forty-three. I look younger, though, right? You, you look, <laughs> you look young. Yeah. You, you don't know, have you as know much funny? salt and pepper in your beard uh, as I have. Yeah. You, yeah. you know what's funny? We have another very good friend of mine on here named Scott, oh, <laughs> and cool. he's like oh, right forty-two. On. So oh, that's right funny. On. Yeah. yeah no, right on. Um, no, good stuff. Uh, what are some other? I'm just curious. What are some other topics that you, you all cover um, in these kind of intellectual uh, it's conversations? It's different. It's different for every show that we do on call in on our main discord. We talk about everything, you know, scientific Mm. or political, but on my shows, it's specifically philosophy, linguistics, philosophy of mind, uh, everything from metaphysics, ontology, ethics, all that stuff. Psychology is my main passion. So that's always what I'm into. There's going to be a lot of, I'm going to have a lot of episodes on psychology coming up. I've already done a lot. That's wonderful. Epistemology. So that's really wonderful, Thomas. Yeah. Thank you, man. Very yeah, we have a team of uh, broadcasters here that all bring something different to the table, and so long they as they beat, beat, yeah, yeah, exactly. So long as they uh, they govern based on the the Pangburn rules of discourse, then uh, they can all yeah. serve their own purposes uh, yeah. through their own shows here. So you know, it's a way to give platforms to uh, people that probably otherwise wouldn't have them or at least have a, a room big enough to be able to have a, a, a great depth of conversation. Yeah. I'm very thankful to Travis congrats. to provide the opportunity to talk to people like you, man. Yeah. No, congrats on, uh, on, on what you do and uh, bringing uh, intellectual thought into the public world because we desperately need it. There's a lot yeah, of yes, unintellectual thought. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. the, the, the big thing for me was trying to bring these, big intellectual discussions into the public square as opposed to uh, somewhat hiding in the universities right yeah i think i think the these these opportunities to come out and uh engage with people who are interested in jumping into the dialectic uh if this if this is only at the universities people people can be intimidated by it and 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 also 
you know, not feel as though they, they will be welcome to share their piece because they don't have any background in academia. So, so I really want to be, uh, you know, part of my moral quest is to uh, try to bring the, uh, the, the, the bricklayers and the PhDs together for conversations without any kind of necessarily any kind of preconceived anticipation that the bricklayer has something less of less value to say than the PhD. Well, that's really good. That's really good. Do you ever get any pretentious twats on here? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, in my opinion, yes. I, I'm one of them. Yeah, <laughs> you don't you don't have to mention names, but do you ever get someone on here and like halfway in or like five minutes in, you're like, oh shit, this guy thinks he's better than the bricklayer. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's n not so much amongst the uh, the professionals that we bring on. Like, uh, okay. you know, they, they tend to conduct themselves professionally. And if someone calls That's in good. with a question that that it would be very easy to have a reaction to, you know, this is stupid, and you know, what, like, what are you doing? You have an opportunity to talk to me. And when, it's more, uh, I find with kind of young people who are moving their way through academia, getting their degrees, they might come into like the Pangburn server expecting to like, you know, that they're going to go, you know, uh, full deep dive into, uh, we were talking about uh, neutral monism last night. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to do a deep dive into something very technical, but you know, sometimes it will be like a musician in the room who wants to talk about ideas or the the political flavor of the day, uh, and um, you know, and and it won't necessarily be about you know diving into the uh, into the uh, Hegelian possessions that live on today in, in many young philosophers. So it's uh -huh. you know, I, I I think it's a it's a good mix, and yeah, one of my 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 dreams and quests was to bring uh, just people together uh, where the, the arguments matter, uh, not so much uh, who they're coming from, you know. Well, that's awesome. But uh, yes, and yes, and um, sometimes it does matter where who it's coming from. I'd For rather sure. have a surgeon operate on my tumor than um, a uh, conspiracy theorist on the internet. Yeah, matters of licensing are are you know these are these are important matters that shouldn't be yeah. taken too lightly. And we've seen through this uh, this COVID nineteen um, uh, kind of piecemeal uh, like thrown together reaction to a pandemic that we got caught with our pants down to mm -hmm. in some regards in in certain areas. And then you know some of these some of these areas where we we kind of got surprised by a couple things. Uh, people kind of started filling in the gaps with their own wild ideas about like how they have become a you know a virologist and a vaccine expert overnight and you know well, that's this, right. <laughs> this this kind of stuff and you know and they, but but I think fundamentally this is a an issue of logic and uh, how can we sort out issues of logic if we are if if there are no dialogues happening in the public at least yeah. uh, at least those in good faith and in a helpful manner so yeah. you know the, those are the rules that govern the the pangburn dialogue so you know i hope yeah. to show as many people as we can that uh you know we can agree to some fundamental baseline rules for these battlefields that will bear more fruit than if we're just going on twitter and calling each other a cockhead or whatever <laughs> I've, I've actually never heard that one before but yeah. i've heard a lot of great ones i've heard a lot of great ones on pangburn philosophy trust trust me there's been some good ones <laughs> never heard of that one <laughs> what are you uh currently oh working God. on Scott? Uh, uh, uh are you writing writing a book or well th well thanks so much for asking um i am indeed writing a book that um, I'm very excited about and I actually just got the contract for and I actually haven't announced it to anyone. I haven't even told anyone in the world that I got the contract or that I'm even working on a new book. So you're the only one in the world that knows cool. that right now. Um, Thank except you. My, pub my publisher. Um, uh, and I think it'll be very relevant to uh, a lot of issues you cover on this. this it, it's very, uh, it'll be very much central in the cultural wars. Uh, I'm, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone to use psychology to help us understand what the hell's going on. Perfect. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's all I can say about that. But I'm also creating a new form of coaching. I'm calling self-actualization coaching. 
I'm really excited. I'm super excited about that. And we, um, uh, we're, we're right now we're partnering with better up, which is a, a top coaching company where we're training all of their coaches on this new form of coaching. And, uh, I do, I do see a gap. I saw a gap in the coaching world, um, where there was so much a focus on particular slices of you, like happiness coaching or like high performance coaching, but not like whole person integration coaching. Like, what does it mean to actually um, be an integrated, harmonious human where all areas of your life are working together and you feel really like you're, you're fully alive. And so I, I decided to, uh, to create a, this new form of coaching and we're, we're going to start training educators. I've, I want to go into schools too, by the way, and train teachers to be self-actualization coaches um, with Perfect. their students. That's a big dream of mine. Yeah. Well, if you yeah. would ever uh, like to do a, a live, you know, or recorded demonstration of this with a with a plethora of people that you you could interact with and and talk about cool, this with, we'd be we'd be happy to do that here. If you're if you're ever needing an audience or people to bounce, uh, bounce. You can do it with me if you want to. I don't mind. <laughs> Thomas is always down for. <laughs> I love that. No, I you guys have have a great openness to experience. It's wonderful. Yeah. That's what I'm trying yeah. to do. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, I could talk to you about a few more things that I've written down here. I like the open conversation, of course, but like, do you want us to tell us anything about Beyond G with Beth, Beth Visser? Oh, yeah. Well, the Beth, I don't know how to pronounce her, uh, Beth's last name. I don't I either. Admit. <laughs> I think it must, it, it must be Visser. It's, I think that's the, like, if we had to do a probability analysis, that's probably what it is. But, yeah. um, but, uh, the, the thing with with that research analysis is that they try to test Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences, and the problem is that whenever you try to test uh, that idea, you have to put it on paper and pencil. Like, how do you test it? You know, and once you start quantifying it, and once you start giving people tests, it's going to tap into this what's called the central executive attention brain network. It's going to it's going to tap into Jet G. General intelligence, general intellect. There's no way around it. You can't swerve around general intelligence. You can't have reasoning and swerve around general intelligence. Yeah. Uh, I've never quite put it like that, but um, uh, that's just the fact of the matter. You know, look, I'm not into um, political correctness um, about intelligence. I'm also not into pro provocation. I'm not into either either of those two things. Um, so I just, like I said, in this recent episode, I just did, uh, of the human potential lab series that I started on my podcast. Um, I just wanted to present the facts to people, um, and then discuss what the implications of those facts are for creating an education system for everyone. Um, you know, with jet, with Beth, Beth Visser's test, I mean, of course, visual, if you test someone, visual, spatial, uh, intelligence, their vocabulary, uh, the cog smorgasbord of different things. Um, uh, and it taps into your ability to think on the spot and, and integrate things in your working memory, the G factor is going to pop up. You can't help Always. it. You can't sweep <laughs> it under the rug. You can't sweep the G factor under the rug. No, the G you factor can't. is so controversial in certain liberal circles. You can't, you can't, you can't talk about general intelligence because it, it immediately pops into head people, racism and well, Gen yeah. X and so oh, they well, want you, like hierarchical, I'm sorry, Travis, they want like hierarchical models and stuff. No, 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 they just, no, 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 that's too nuanced. <laughs> You're being too oh. nuanced there. No, 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 I'm saying certain political, it gets politicized. And when it yeah, gets yeah. politicized, it's not like they're arguing. I know. Oh, it... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, Sam uh, Harris stepped in it a bit with some of his, know. Uh, you know, his uh, audience. When and he we talked about with, that on his uh, podcast. Charles Murray, right? Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and what is your uh, attitude towards this? Uh, do you see any uh, correlation? Like, if we're talking about the the intellectual horsepower, the the intelligence quotient that is measured by uh, testing today, do you think there is any? I mean, race is such a like such a like very surface well, we, level uh, yeah, thing. And a thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean, I I've studied this topic for. 15, 20, no, I guess 20 years now because I find it a fascinating, fascinating intellectual topic. Um, and I just really don't like when it gets politicized because then that shuts down open inquiry. Right. Um, uh, we Something that, that I am deeply interested in is understanding the obvious uh, race differences in gifted education. Um, if you If you go into any, fact, if you go into any gifted education program in America, it's like majority white actually now it tends to be majority asian which is interesting 
um, but hardly any black people. And so I care deeply about that. I want to know what is going on. What are the reasons why? I mean, there are a lot of people in the field that really care a lot about that. Um, you, you have to, why is there such an over, uh, such an underrepresentation of certain uh, ethnic groups, racial ethnic groups in gifted education and such an overrepresentation in special education? I was the minority in special education as being white. Um, I would say uh, most of the problem kids were black, right? Do you, and uh, that's, the, and yeah. why? Why? Do you have what any kind intuition? of system have we created? What kind yeah. of system have we created that makes it that way? Do you have any intuitions at this point uh, as to why, for instance, the first example you gave, why in the, uh, you know, the in the advanced classes you're seeing less uh, uh, black people? Um, well, I think that there are there are um, like preconceptions that teachers have about what giftedness looks like. Yeah, and big time that. And I think that that's um, really a shame, you know, like the gifted kid is the one who's just does her, the apple polish, right? They like get everything mm. right, you know, and um, we really leave out creative kids, imaginative kids. Um, I'll tell you an interesting statistic we found on our test that there, there is fa fact, uh, there, their average difference between blacks and whites on IQ tests is huge. Uh, it's, we're talking like, you know, it's like 15 points on average. Um, um, it's, 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 it's narrowed over the years. Um, so that's true. It might be like eight points, now. but there, there is a difference. But if you give them creativity tests, we have found zero differences between blacks and whites on creativity tests, on divergent thinking tests, your ability to think outside the box to think. And, and also on practical intelligence tests, you don't see any differences. Um, if anything, you know, people with street smarts, you know, that tend to be a certain demographic just because of the kind of society we live in and everything, um, tend to outshine those who, who didn't come from what are called stress adapted environments. Um, because when you're in a stress adapted environment, you learn all sorts of tricks and tools and, and things to survive that it's a different yeah. kind of intelligence. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't know. No one knows the answer, Travis. No one knows the answer, but I think a lot of it does come down to our notions of what it means to be a gifted human, what it means to be intelligent. Um, and, um, and we're letting a lot of kids fall, fall between the cracks, um, mm. because, um, they're acting out, uh, because of the environment they're in, because of the culture they're in, um, they're acting out and that acting out is getting them in detention as opposed to harnessing that acting out in a way that could be very productive. Like we're just wasting all this talent. I think. Would you be okay with more, uh, psychological, um, training for teachers and also more psychotherapists in schools? I would love that. Um, I would also love, well, I, I would love coaches. I really, I'm, I'm actually really into a coaching model, um, of schools. I work with this group called the future project and, um, they created the office of the dream director in the schools and it's a position, a full-time position where any student can go to the office of the dream director and tell them what project they want to do. And, uh, and what they what lights them up and what their passion is and they get them resources and they get the mentors in the community to help them no questions asked you don't have to like take an iq test to to see whether or not you're capable of uh ending bu bullying you know um yeah. like I, I i've argued it's stupid we have the middleman or uh the, the i want to be gender neutral <laughs> the middle person of iq you know Oh, you're canceled. It's on Twitter oh my already. God. No, oh, actually, this, well, this will be watched years in the future. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so funny. You know, as long as like nothing is taken out of context, then we're good. No. Because yeah, right. everything, everything within context should be okay. <laughs> but, um, but um, you know, uh, it's just like we need to have the school structure where every student feels as though they're inner dreams and desires and, and self-actualizing intelligence like i talked about earlier matters and it's not just how they score in a standardized test mm. that's the problem that's the problem yeah absolutely i think the testing is going to be the is going to be the big the psychometrics of intelligence are going to change a lot <clears throat> in the next few years i imagine and how mm. we try to deal with that i mean General intelligence can't G factor can't be ignored, and it seems like all roads lead to G factor, right? Well, that's an interesting point. Um, you know, some researchers have argued that is the case that that G is kind of the 
the gra the gravity like the black hole it like sucks everything else in. <laughs> yeah. Some people have argued that. Um, you know, well, the, the 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 Murray argument is 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 something specific, and that's that society is whether we like it or not, society is actually stratified stratified not by SES as the most like SES of course is. There are SES differences, but it's stratified by cognitive ability when you just right get down to it. And yeah. I don't completely agree with that hypothesis. Um, I uh, so one of these days I'll have a I'll have a chat with Murray on uh, on some 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 venue. Maybe you, you should organize that one, Fangburn. Uh, we can do it. I'll, I'm down. Yeah, that would be good. Woo, that, that, that would not, be not, something. We might uh, need a uh, to do that one publicly in a venue. That would be interesting. No, oh, I'm saying public. I'm saying publicly. I'm saying yeah, yeah. If yeah. you had me and me and you know, I'm like uh, considered a, a world's expert on intelligence, and and he is too, uh, to a certain degree. I don't know how much he scientifically has studied intelligence. No, but, that would be um, great. I know if we did it in Vancouver yeah. here, there would be, uh, it would get a lot of attention. There would be, mm. you know, because there is that uh, group here in Vancouver of people that would come out and picket such an event. You know. Uh, for it even even well, being considered well it'd probably be a big deal it'd be a big deal that conversation but i let me just say um the, why i don't think he's completely right and i do think that um uh some of the criticism is valid some of the criticism is not valid uh you know, especially in the, the when it gets politicized but if we just stick with the facts um i think that we have to recognize that there's a whole nexus of interconnected we can look at a view as a network of factors that cause um, people to um, be um, lower uh, in, in social mobility versus those that are higher in social mobility. And he's plucked out IQ, but I don't think you can actually pluck out IQ from the whole network. I think all mm -hmm. these positively correlated things, um, IQ is correlated with um, criminality, correlated with um, with environmental crime, correlate, but you look at all these culture, factors. maybe to state some. Well, be well more absolutely general, culture, right? absolutely yeah. culture. The amount of books that you read as a child, that are actually the amount of books that are on your bookshelf. They actually researchers have counted the amount of books on a bookshelf uh, for a child, a developing child, age two, three. That correlates with later IQ. There are there are various factors in the environment that um, intellectual stimulation matters um, as as a kid. Versus not being intellectually stimulated, um, and you just simply can't divorce IQ from all those other things. He treats IQ, he essentializes IQ, and I think that's a problem. I view IQ more as the emergent outcome of all of these factors as opposed to the causal force, and 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 I can actually prove that mathematically with proofs. <laughs> so so we we have actually sh we have papers and showing clearly that that um the, the sort of the the the, the murray model the hergy murray model is that g is the is the causal force of everything else whereas actually all the research and statistical models show that the better fitting model is when g is the emergence um mm. of a instead whole of the causal of, agent instead of the yeah. ca causal instantiation yeah. it's more about yeah. the epiphenomenon g is what emerges it's like consciousness yeah. consciousness yeah. emerges uh, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's an epiphenomenal yeah. emergent thing. I got you. That's a good way you put it with the nexus uh, of that inter intersectionality. I like that too. Well, can I put an article in your chat window for your? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I wrote, an, I wrote an article called IQ in Society," which uh, just I, have... Scott. I also tagged you in a in a tweet um, that oh, has right the on. link link for this. If you do want to share with your. Uh, audience after you tweeted me out talking about black and white people like you i did <laughs> i also that's also attached some justin trudeau blackface images as well just to add, <laughs> you know, add a little flavor to it now i trusted i i came on the show because i trusted you so hopefully <laughs> that trust is yeah um cool um so yeah you tweeted out so what did you tweet out you tweeted out we are live oh. with sp kaufman right now do you tweet out something else yeah 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 that's that's what i uh Oh, gotcha. Just cool. to share the link, you know. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, I had to hop off soon, unfortunately. Well, but, I mean, I've I've covered everything I wanted to with yeah. you, and I've gained a lot of insight from you talking. Oh, to Oh, good. Me about this. I hope this so was I valuable. I hope this was valuable for your audience. No, that's what I do this oh, stuff yeah. for, man. This is yeah. my passion is learning from professionals. So I really appreciate you. That's awesome. Appreciate you too, Thomas. Are you active on Clubhouse at all? Clubhouse? I don't think so. It's a shame. There was a time uh, about a year and a half ago, like the start of the pandemic, when Clubhouse, we, we had constantly we had intellectual, like you would have been great for 
uh, being a part of those conversations. And then I don't know what Thank happened you. to Clubhouse, though. I think it disappeared. Well, I mean, but, you're always welcome back here, and I would love to have oh, you anytime you. you want to be here. So. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Yeah. Send me. Um, well, I really appreciate that. Uh, send me a link to um, this conversation. Can you send me a link to it? Or yeah, I will whatnot? for sure. Okay. Yeah. And yep. uh, yeah, I need I need to hop off, but I, I, w I hope you all have a great night, and I hope this was valuable. Thank you, man, so much. Go have a good night, Kaufman. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> have a good night. Thank you. Good night, buddy. Awesome stuff, Thomas. Yay! That was uh that was. You know he's uh, he's a he's a master of of conversation. Yes, he is. He's very good at it. Yeah, I like people who are good at conversation. It makes me feel not alone. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah have to it's, listen yeah. back to that because <clears throat> I came a little late. <clears throat> no, it's all good. Everybody who's but here can pipe up now. Sounds like he uh, he's a well-spoken guy. Knows what he's talking about. How do you uh, determine IQ tests, <clears throat> or how do you like make IQ tests? There, there are many different types of them, and we <clears throat> talked about we talked about the, uh, you know, how is it measured with intelligence psychometrics, and and a lot of them come back to this general intelligence, what's called a G factor. Okay. But there are some intelligence models to where like interpersonal and and musical intelligence don't fall within a correlation of general intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, we also talked about like, you know, psychology now has expanded our, our understanding of intelligence beyond general intelligence. And there's many books about that out there. And he's actually working on right now uh, that, you know, that we change through our lives in terms of intelligence and that correlation differs across lifespans. Uh, there's also the fact that uh, the G factor hierarchy might not, you know, might not be everything. It might not be fundamental. And that's what he's trying to get to. And, and I'm going to have shows on intelligence, but I don't think it can be much better than what we've talked about here because intelligence is so broad. I'm kind of with him in the fact that it's an epi epiphenomenal feature of all of our cognitive and imaginative and emotional processes going on instead of a causal feature. Um, consciousness may be the causal feature. It might be something as general and vague as that, or it might be something more specific, but uh, that's basically what he covered. I was thinking about that pretty recently, like a week ago, like, hmm, I wonder what the standards are of the IQ tests and why should we conform to whoever makes them? And like you said, there's the issue of finding out what's fundamental if, if it is such a thing, so... Yeah, I would do a deep dive, Perry, into the wiki uh, page for intelligence quotient. It's got all the history. It's got okay. like, it's got all all of the. And then if you go uh, and if you want a little more detail, go to the Mensa uh, website, um, the organization, uh, worldwide organization that's tasked with measuring intelligence quotient in, in different countries and different people. Um, uh, but they'll they'll. Uh, speak about their precisely what what they think is actually being uh, being tested and and some of the confusions that come with when people come to IQ uh, the, you know, or when people talk about IQ they they will be like well you know if I don't have a if I don't have a uh, above average IQ I won't ever do anything above average and that's mm -hmm. just not the case you know it's sure. a lot of it sure it will it, it should be able to measure if you do you know the four or five uh rounds of testing it should be able to measure the like the intellect uh, the the intellectual horsepower of your brain whatever that means you don't even have to call it intellect or intelligence but just kind of the 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 computational ability of your of your brain but uh, what someone does with that, I mean, you can you can just go, you can just put all of that intelligence quotient into becoming a really, uh, really good at doing sweet fuck all, and uh, you know, and not doing much at all, and and you know, so intelligence quotient is just simply like, okay, uh, you know, they people might use it in more fields like. Uh, in fields like math, mathematical fields, like uh, like chaos math, these like really really high, um, highly abstract uh, mathematical fields, you're gonna find people that have generally have very high intelligence quotients that work in these fields. It just works out that way. Um, so th there's something to be said about some fields 
generally are going to require high intelligence quotients versus other fields. Um, you know, that's at least what the what this current measurement uh, has been shown to uh, uh, map, I guess. Most of the factors that are found in all of the IQ tests that have been that have been purported and used is that if you're good at one thing on that IQ test, you're good at most all of them. Now, that doesn't show anything other than the fact that people with higher intelligence can abstract and use different um, conceptions to solve abstractions, problem solving and things like that. But it doesn't really necessarily determine intellectual horsepower. It's, it's more about the way you think. So I don't know. I don't know. It's up in the air for me. I have no idea if intelligence is this epiphenomenal uh, thing. I don't know yet. I mean, I've just gotten more questions from studying this. I mean, maybe yeah. in a hundred years, an IQ test is going to be so much more advanced, and we're going to look like dummies. Right. With the IQ well, test well, it, the also intellectual quotient tests are used in medicine for uh, d diagnosing, or or at least um, at least uh, giving insights. Uh, into uh, uh, providing some insights to uh, look towards certain diagnoses. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's a, uh, it's like, uh, oh, interesting. You know, it's got practical application as well. In it yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, IQ tests aren't to be ignored, and neither is neither is general intelligence. It's just we're moving past there, and it's it's too vague. IQ tests are so vague uh, because they can't super specialize them because then you'd have to specialize it for every individual person. That's why they make them vague is so that they can see what happens over a case study, uh, case studies over gradients of time. And, and uh, who do you, I mean, like, who do you conform to get them from? Cause you can get a free one quote free IQ test. Obviously we don't know how, like, uh, I don't know. Travis. I'm going to post Mensa international, uh, Right here, Mensa's and, probably and got an IQ that. test. I bet. Well, well, well Mensa is is, is like the international body of, uh, basically trying to collect and catalog high high IQs. Um, so yeah, look into Mensa. Um, as as far as I'm concerned, I think Mensa is the only organization that that does it in Canada, like uh, professionally. Um, but I could be wrong about that. Yeah. I mean, this really has been my episode on intelligence. Well, I'll probably still have one in the future, but God dang, we covered a lot here. It's very important. Well, uh, yeah. I, I didn't get to ask him because we didn't have time. Uh, intelligence versus traits. Ver excuse me. Intelligence versus talents. Talents. And uh, there seems to right. be some some delineation between the two, or maybe this is just a just juxtaposed duality, but hmm. I don't know. I mean, a talent could be the whole book, book smart, street smart thing where it's more about intuition and less about analysis. Um, I don't know. What about like physical, well, like talents and ping pong, but you're not that smart. Yeah. That's a talent. Yeah. That would be yeah. a talent. Yeah. Well, I mean, technically, it's, I think is a different thing altogether as well. Like smartness is an, abstraction from like uh the application of one's intelligence so you know if a, a guy so a guy might have a below average iq but has created boston pizza and has made it world world renowned or or like a a chain of mechanic shops that is like the best run mechanic shop that have ever hit the market and it's like that's a really smart person but it doesn't change their intelligence quotient. Their intelligence quotient might be below average, but they're still a yeah. smart person. So I think smartness speaks more to wisdom and uh, intelligence quotient just speaks more to whether you call it horsepower or, or computational ability is, uh, you know, I think that's what Wolfram calls it because everything's computation in his world. That was my or in our question. world, you know, I would say that. Like is computation <laughs> and intelligence synonymous to you, Travis? <clears throat> um yeah, yeah but i mean like computation will have so many different uh applications linguistically so it, it would just depend what we're talking about okay. computationally like the act uh yeah like the 
in, in, in intelligence, that's a weird one when it comes to crossing with uh, consciousness. Like, what does that mean computationally? It's a, it's a very strange mm, So thing. would you say computation is more so synonymous to consciousness rather than intelligence? Well, no, I think when we're talking about uh, uh, consciousness, we're just talking about experience. I, 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 when I, when, consciousness is this overarching thing that contains all these mental attributes like intelligence yeah. and all that. I would consider consciousness a metaphorical category. More, yeah, yeah. More, so, more yeah. so that contains all these things, more so than the causal factor of intelligence or the causal factor of emotions. It's, it's yeah. more of like an encapsulated thing. But intelligence. Yeah, but I would say it, it, consciousness is basically encapsulating everything within the experience. Yes, right? everything within the phenomenal experience yeah. is consciousness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's sort of... why I typically talk about Perry uh, when we start talking about conversations about consciousness i kind of go straight to okay well let's go right to the heart of the issue which is the the hard problem let's go right there which is you know how can there be an experience in a in a physical yeah, world where did like I, you know and and where is the material representation of of it yeah, yeah. you know that's the big one i do have to run though thomas thank you very much man Bye -bye. this was another love you, man. brilliant episode you rock love you too so you said consciousness was a metaphor in terms of what we just described. The way that it's categorized as a metaphor, as and in the way that you would like see this sphere. Consciousness is the sphere among an individual, and then intelligence is a factor. Attitudes are a factor, which birth beliefs, thoughts, and emotions, in, at least in terms of psychology. And, and then, of course, you know, imagination modules, creativity modules, heuristic modules. Well, it's interesting um, because Travis also said like smartness was like abstraction. But, well, smartness could just mean wisdom, like he says. I mean, hold on, hold on. smart is so vague, it, it, it means something different than intelligence. Right. But intelligence, you don't, you're not viewing it as a metaphor. You're viewing, you're viewing it more as a... a but yeah, intelligence concept. is more of like a, like, <clears throat> like an actual, some kind of, uh, it's an abstract concept, but it, it, it's like, it's a methodology. It can, it can be used rather than consciousness is just happening. You know what I mean? Can I say, uh, I think intelligence is acquiring knowledge and a methodology of processing that knowledge of information together to come to a logical predetermined outcome in a way to acquire new knowledge. Well, that's the way a lot of regular like scientists would say, you know, you, you experience and infer information and then convert that information to knowledge and retain that knowledge. And then you use that knowledge to go to another problem that's novel, that's new, and you solve it. That that is what a lot of people consider intelligence. But that's that's just a really vague uh, assumption about what intelligence is. It contains so many other things um, that it gets it gets really complicated to talk. Your level about. of taking in that knowledge and processing it, and, and I, I get what you, I get what you're saying, but I, yeah, I know you do. I know you do. But 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 the the it it it's processing the knowledge to to it, to 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 understand how it relates to each other in the act of being logical, right? And that act of being yes. logical is, is is intellect. Intellect, I think, is a is a is a weird word because you know we don't even have to really use it. Um, intellect to me would just be like intelligence over time, you know, just. I don't, I don't know, you know, if you, if you, well, can you say, can you say someone possesses intelligence? Perhaps. Can you say someone possesses intellect? I don't, I don't know. That's, that's really, it's, it's more vague. It's more general. Ain't it the same thing? I don't think so. I don't think intellectual is the same as intelligence because intelligence is an act and an intellect would be like a state, you know, just like consciousness would be this, this metaphorical state. It's not actually a methodology or a tool like intelligence or um, imagination or creativity or feelings or whatever else, you know, those are all, those are all useful to us. So intelligence is an act. I think so. Yes. I think intelligence is an act because it comprises, I mean, Nivik, if, if I've gone over the internet looking at what comprises it and you can say, you can say the ability to abstract, you can say the ability to, to understand logical reasoning and uh, um, critical thinking. You can say it's the ability to learn, the ability to have emotional intelligence, if that's actually a real thing. 
uh, the ability to use reason and imagination to, to, to problem solve, um, the ability to uh, be self-aware and self-conscious and intrapersonally intelligent. All these things that I've found that a lot of people define intellect and intelli well, intelligence as, it, it's just like we talked about with our guest, it's so much more complicated than that. But he wants to simplify it and kind of unify it. And I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, we do know that intelligence exists. We do know that IQ matters in terms of being able to do certain jobs and things like that. But does it really matter in terms of a person's character overall, how, how intelligent or smart they are overall? That's going to be a lot harder to, to, to quantify. You take it knowledge and use that knowledge in a way uh, that's logical to find new knowledge. And it's just, it's just ongoing knowledge they put together in, in a way that's logical to acquire new knowledge, to put that knowledge together, to process that knowledge together in a way that's logical to acquire new knowledge. It's just on endlessly ongoing. Yeah. It seems like an endless thing. And, and that, that knowledge has to be used to solve new problems because if it's not, then we don't know if it's intelligent. That's the whole big thing about intelligence is being able to solve novel problems, novel, you know, come up with novel solutions from previously understood knowledge and information. What do you think of nature versus nurture? Uh, it's, it's a duality. I don't think that anything, any human being or any living being on this planet it, it's not just nature or nurture that, that influences their, uh, well, we'll just say humans. It's not nature or nurture. I mean, like my bipolar Nivik is mostly nature, but it's also a little bit of nurture in how I was raised and how my environment was. But it's, it's probably like a 30 percent nurture and a 70 and percent a nature from what I've done studies on bipolar. There's there's different factors. Do you think that there's things in the environment that could affect you emotionally that affected your 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 intellect? Because I mean, I think I that's the case. I think I'm sure that's the case with some people. I mean, if they have emotions so strong and vividly, maybe they have PTSD that that might hold them back intellectually. You know what I mean? That might hold them back academically. That's possible. Definitely. Yeah. That's from yeah. That's what I was trying to go. Yeah. So it plays yeah, Peter's role. Peter's right. The the seventy thirty split. Yep. You know, uh, uh, can, I mean, guys, guys, I, you know, I love you to death. I'm getting so fucking hungry. Can we go over to discord? All right. Everybody in the.